The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead. stand for our gospel reading. <coughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered round him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Do please sit down. And let's bow our heads to pray. Let us pray. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him and say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to the sheepfold. We are part of the flock of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. It's safe in here, in the sheepfold with Jesus. And he promises to lead us as we go out of here, the sheepfold, and into the week to find pasture and to live out our lives. And that picture of a safe sheepfold is literally true for many Christians because for many Christians it's a brave thing to go to church. Many churches in parts of the world there are security guards on the door because to be a Christian is a dangerous thing and you literally risk your life. So it's important to know that Jesus is our good shepherd, our protector. We may not be in physical danger for being Christians, but we're still called to live out our faith in a world and a society which by and large does not live by the values of the good shepherd and doesn't recognize him. Elsewhere in the gospel, Jesus looks on the crowds and has compassion for them. And he says they are like sheep without a shepherd and our society needs the guidance of a shepherd and most of all a good shepherd we've been reminded very recently of the fragility of our world even in our prosperous part of the world disease the renewed threat of war and the threat of environmental disaster we live in a fragile world which needs a good shepherd. 
We live in a world of scarcity. We're always, always being spoken to about there's not enough money for this, that and the other. The cost of living crisis. Energy bills going through the, the, the roof. And because of living in a scarce world, it makes our world to be an anxious world. We become reluctant to share in case there might not be enough for me. And it's true at an individual level and a government level as well, with the government cutting down on aid for overseas. Uh, so there's reluctance in a scarce world to share. And many politicians and advertisers play on those fears. Things are scarce, so we can't share. We live in a world of greed, where today's luxuries become tomorrow's necessities. We live in a world of self-sufficiency and independence. Lots of community groups, voluntary groups, struggle, as well as churches, for people who will step out and help one another. And the idea that we need each other, and especially that we need God, is considered a quite uh, minority interest. And we live in a world of private moral morality. The rules are about what is right for me. What is right for me. When Jesus is challenged about the Messiah, Jesus replies by talking about the Messiah being a shepherd. He takes the Old Testament image of God being a shepherd and applies it to himself as the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, we say and we sing. But it's interesting to turn that phrase around a little bit and say, is the Lord my shepherd? Is the Lord my shepherd? Is he the one who we are following and listening to and living by? Or why are we infected by the values of the world? Two Christians were on holiday once abroad in a remote mountainous area in a village. And they struck up a friendship and a conversation with a, a shepherd boy. And they tried to um, tell him about Jesus being the good shepherd as he was a, a shepherd boy. And uh, the, the language was limiting. So the two Christians taught the shepherd boy to say, The Lord is my shepherd. And said, hang on to him tight, my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And it's a good thing to do, to remind ourselves. If you're in the middle of an anxious, sleepless night, if you're in pain and trouble and can't really pray long prayers, just do. The Lord is my shepherd. My shepherd. And that picture of Jesus the shepherd and God as the shepherd reminds us that God is not remote. God is close. A shepherd gives their whole life for the sheep. It's an up-close and personal role. I've recently uh, read a book called A Shepherd's Life. And it's about a shepherd uh, in the Lake District. And uh, he describes the realities of a shepherd's life. And he goes into some detail, which I won't repeat, but fairly graphic detail about how much bodily fluids of sheep you come into contact with as a shepherd. Uh, you can't be a shepherd at arm's length. And Jesus the Good Shepherd is not at arm's length to you and to me and to our needy world. He offers us provision and protection as a shepherd provides and protects his sheep. There are times when we have to go through rough times and difficult times as individuals and as a church. And that can remind us that sometimes a shepherd had to take his sheep through rough and difficult countryside on the way to new pasture. He is with us, whatever in our circumstances. The good shepherd stands between us and our problems like a shepherd stood in the way of a wolf. We're not asked to face our troubles and our difficulties alone. And he offers his care and protection and provision for us, not just because it's his job. He offers that care because 
He loves us. He loves us. And in Old, Te in Old New Testament times, a shepherd would only have a small flock of sheep. They'd be kept for their wool rather than their meat. And that kind of shepherd would know each individual sheep, maybe even have names for them. And what that kind of shepherd was to his sheep, Jesus is to you and me, our good shepherd. And Jesus offers a relationship with us. And relationships are two ways, aren't they? If you're not on speaking terms, then there's something amiss in your relationship. Jesus says, my sheep listen to my voice. There's a great story of an assembly in school. All the children were there in the hall and the head teacher was at the front and the head teacher spots Billy at the back and uh, he's going to get on with Billy and in the middle of the assembly he calls out, Billy, are you learning anything? And Billy replies, no sir, I'm listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it that we are really paying attention to? How much are we guided by the values of Jesus, the Good Shepherd? And do we take time to be with Jesus and to listen to Jesus? Not only in church, but in our <coughs> daily disciplines of prayer and reading the Bible, to keep in touch with him. Sheep are not as silly as they're often made out to be. Sheep recognise the voice of their shepherd. They aren't like cows who are driven from behind. Sheep prefer to follow behind the good shepherd. So, are we tuned in to the shepherd's voice? And finally, Jesus talks about there are other sheep out there. There's room in this St. Helen sheepfold for more. There are some empty chairs to fill up. So do you know a sheep that's gone astray? Do you know someone who's looking for guidance and purpose and meaning in their life? Who needs the care and the love of Jesus, the Good Shepherd? Someone who we can welcome into the flock here. This is a place to belong to be one flock under one shepherd, a place that lost sheep can find a home and a place to hear and follow Jesus, who is our good shepherd. Let us pray. Lord, I do not know what it is like to be a sheep, but I do know what it is like to need a shepherd, to feel that someone cares to know there is someone who will listen to me, someone I can trust, someone who understands me and wants the best for me. Lord, I can be stubborn like a sheep and I can be afraid and I can be vulnerable. Please meet me where I am in all my hopes and longings and be my good shepherd. Amen. Amen. He guides my ways in righteousness, and He anoints my head with oil, and my cup is overflows with joy. I feast on His pure will trust in His and I will trust in You. Oh, yeah.
Your goodness will lead. 